Well, as a trade union organiser with a, a lot of experience now of organising workers into the trade union movement and organising workers in their employments, it strikes me that there are a number of critical developments that would need to happen in order for us to live up to the aspirations of the proclamation. And so they would, if you look at the proclamation, it, it, it talks about the pursuit of prosperity. For the majority of people, for the 99%, uh, prosperity is dependent upon having a job. And prosperity is also dependent upon earning a standard of living, earning wages, where you can provide for yourself and you can provide for your family with decency. It's, you know, it's not about struggling to get by, it's not about working poverty. It's about imagining a future where workers can provide for themselves and a decent standard of living. So the proclamation also talks about the pursuit of happiness. And as the majority of people have to go out to work to provide for themselves and their families, uh, we need to really have a think and, and a conversation in this country about valuing work. We're all human beings. The work that we do needs to be valued. We need to be respected in our work. And we also need the opportunity to balance all of our, our, our humanity, really. The part of us that needs to go to work and earn a decent living and be treated decently. But also the opportunity to balance our needs for personal development and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, for leisure time, for time with our families and for time um, to participate in our communities and to develop our communities. The proclamation also talks about um, equal opportunities and it strikes me that um, the, the opportunity of equal opportunity in, in working life, in the workforce, uh, that, that will continue to elude women in particular, I think, if we don't deal with the um, gender pay gap. And the gender pay gap is entirely dependent upon um, quality childcare. And so for me, and the proclamation also talks about this, the right of the people to own Ireland. The right of the people, if you imagine a future where Childcare is provided um, as, as a social service in the common good, um, not as a private enterprise for profit. So I imagine a future where all parents, mothers and fathers, can go to work if they want to work. And I imagine a future where the workers who do that caring work are valued as human beings and they're paid wages upon which you can live. And I also imagine a future where once we get to retirement, um, people have the opportunity to retire and they don't feel that responsibility to do the caring for children that our society is so dependent upon um, currently. But as a trade union organiser I know that none of these things will be given to us. We'll have to win these improvements and these progressive changes for our society. So that's why um, I have decided to give my life anyway to building a vibrant, effective, um, participative trade union movement because I believe and I think historically it's demonstrated that the trade union movement, um, a strong trade union movement, is really critical to um, realising the vision of uh, the 1916 proclamation.